So I'm going to go through a little bit on Vacocks and the what, the how and the why. So I'm going to start off with a little bit on what is Vacoxin. So Vacoxin is a white oral suspension that contains diclazurel at 2.5 milligrams per mil. And it's given to both lambs and calves at a one mil per 2.5 kg body weight in a single oral administration. The good news about Vacoxin is that it has a zero meat withdrawal. I suppose that's not overly important for calves unless you're in veal production, but for lambs, especially fat, fattening lambs and store lambs, um, that can be a significant factor for those animals. Shelf life is three months um, after opening and it's advised not to freeze the product. So a little bit then on Vacoxin and how to use it. So I suppose when we're thinking about Vacoxin, um, we need to think about when we actually see disease. So for baby lambs, really, um, we start to see clinical signs in them from about four weeks of age. And in calves, as Owen already mentioned, as young as three weeks old, I suppose after about a year old, most bovines are, have immunity. Um, so we see most of the clinical signs in calves up to six months. However, occasionally we do see it um, in slightly older animals. And I suppose the question is, why does this actually happen? And no one's already spoken um, about immunity. So I suppose the important um, thing is that animals, when they're born, they have no immunity to coccidiosis and therefore they do need exposure to the parasite um, to actually develop that immunity. And this slide um, highlights the series of events that happens to um, lambs, but it's also the same principles um, actually occur in calves as well. In newborn animals, they do get their protection from um, um, their mother's uh, colostrum in the in the form of maternally derived antibodies for a few weeks and that's partially protective but they really are susceptible to disease while they build up their own immunity and this graph highlights that the oocysts are extreme are continuously excreted um, by the o's and by the dam at very low levels throughout life even though they actually have good immunity themselves to coccidiosis and this low level of oocyst excretion is the constant source of contamination to the environment that affects the young uh, lambs and calves soon after birth. And then once this protection from their mother wanes, then you can see that the oocyst excretion starts to increase um, after a few weeks. So it's usually around about three to four weeks. After being infected, then that allows the animal to actually start developing its own immunity. But there is a period um, in between, I suppose, a window of opportunity where the young uh, lamb or calf is extremely vulnerable to disease. And that's illustrated on this slide by those little purple bricks that you can see. So when we come on to the theory of treatment, um, and what we're aiming to achieve. We're really ideally trying to help the animal avoid disease while they develop their own natural immunity. Remember, as Owen's already mentioned, stress does affect immunity. So things like bad weather, overcrowding, um, poor nutrition, um, other infections, maybe such as bovine respiratory disease or um, other pathogens that cause diarrhea or internal parasites such as nematodirus in lambs. Unfortunately, this can extend the window of opportunity and delay the onset of natural protection in that animal. So I suppose control of coccidiosis, it's a delicate balance between the animal's own immunity and developing resistance, along with minimizing the infectious pressure on that animal. For animals to become uh, immune, they must become exposed to all stages of the life cycle. Um, but they are, of course, at risk of clinical disease throughout that period. So controlled exposure will allow the animal to develop immunity. However, if there's an imbalance, so if there's a lot of uh, stress during a time where there's infectious pressure, especially in an animal that has uh, no immunity or has delayed immunity due to concurrent disease, etc., that's when we can often see clinical outbreaks and production loss. So we suppose that's when our therapeutic agents come in, that we can try to minimize those uh, production losses through the use of a product such as Vicoxin. So the principle of coccidiosis treatment is to control the level of challenge to prevent disease, but still allow enough exposure so that young animals can develop immunity. In terms of timing um, of the actual dose, I suppose, unfortunately, there is no one size fits all advice. So a lot of the time we are going based on information that we have to hand from the farmer.
So I suppose ideally we would have um, some historical information from the farmer. Um, this does require good record keeping and knowledge, previous knowledge of outbreaks. Um, and so if we have that on hand, the advice to that farmer would be to treat that group of animals one week before the expected clinical signs occur. And what that will do is it will allow the animals to become exposed and develop immunity to all the stages of the life cycle of the coccidia leucists. But we're trying to come in and kill the parasite in the lining of the guts so that we don't have those clinical signs. The next group then are those that are unknown. So we've unknown history in terms of exposure. We've unknown um, idea about the level of environmental infectious pressure. And we also aren't too sure in terms of the level of stress that has occurred or may occur in the coming weeks. So the advice is there for those animals. If we're turning them out onto questionable pasture or say a dirty environment where we expect coccidia leucistis to be, the advice there is to treat those animals around about two weeks after exposure. Again, allowing the animal to be exposed, develop their own natural immunity, and then using the cox and then to kill the parasite in the lining of the guts. Alternatively then, another option would be to treat at the time of stress. Remember that we said earlier, stress actually can impact on the de development of immunity. Therefore, if there's a stressful time, such as dehorning, castration, weaning, or maybe mixing age groups, etc., that could be a particular time of stress and the advice would be to dose at that time. The third option then is at the first signs of clinical outbreak. So if we have an animal um, in the group that is showing signs of coccidiosis, then the advice is to treat the, um, the, the entire group when we see the first lamb or calf with signs of coccidiosis. And I suppose Owen's already mentioned this, but the advice for all three options is to always treat the whole group, because remember, coccidiosis is not an individual animal issue. It's an entire group disease and all of the animals will become exposed to the same amount of infectious pressure and the same stressors at pretty much the same time. So when we're seeing clinical signs in one, the likelihood is that the life cycle is completing in other animals in that group. In terms of treating in the face of a group, uh, sorry, in terms of treating in the face of a, a disease outbreak, one dose of vacoxin is enough to protect those animals because their own uh, natural immunity should develop uh, if there is exposure. As you mentioned, though, if there's prolonged stress, it may be necessary to repeat the dose if the animals haven't developed that immunity due to that prolonged period of stress. So a second dose can be given three weeks later. Just to touch on some um, specific groups within farms at the minute, I suppose we have a lot of um, dairy calves hitting the ground at the minute, so you might particularly get asked about some of these um, groups, I suppose, for dairy calves. Um, again, the earliest period really of risk for those animals would be from about three weeks old. So ideally, we would go in every week and treat all of the susceptible animals, and that would be those that are three weeks old. However, there would be a huge amount of labour implications there. So um, that's probably not going to happen in reality. Uh, so what might uh, be doable is that the farmer might opt to treat every two weeks. And so all of the calves that are between three to four weeks of age will get a dose at that particular event. And then two weeks later, then a different set of animals coming along um, in the susceptible age group between three to four weeks old will get a dose of a coxin and every two weeks moving forward. And hopefully then those animals will have already developed immunity and they won't need any further treatments. For bought in calves then, for anyone that's buying in calves from a dairy farm, um, the advice would be to treat upon arrival. Because again, these would probably fall into the unknown group or the group that are, um, are exposed to stress. So the advice would be to treat these animals upon arrival and um, then that will kill any of the parasites that are in their, um, in their guts. Moving on then to the uh, question, why vococcin? So why do you choose vococcin? I just like to go through two studies if that's okay. So this is the first study um, that the authors compared the efficacy of uh, the coxin, which is the uh, versus Toltrazeral and Baycox bovis in this study against natural infections of Ameria bovis and Ameria zeronii in calves. And in this study, they had 199 calves aged between 21 and 55 days old. Um, and they were kept for, on nine different farms with a history of coccidiosis. 
The animals were assigned to three different groups. So there was the vacoxin treated group, the Baycox bovis treated group, and then there was the control group that received no treatment at all. The calves were observed then for 48, or sorry, 78 days uh, following the treatment, and they were uh, monitored for oocyst excretion, uh, their faecal scores, as well as their average daily weight gain. In terms of the results then, um, oocyst excretion or shedding was monitored through um, twice weekly faecal examinations. And you can see here um, the green line. Let me just try and get my little my little pointer here. Um, this is the um, mean log total um, oocyst excretion per gram of feces. And the green line is the control group. And you can see throughout the study, oocysts were excreted. And that indicates that there was constant challenge throughout the study period. Between day 12 and day 26, that is when there was the highest mean uh, oocyst excretion throughout the study. In terms of the number of diarrhea days, there was no real difference between the um, calves that experienced diarrhea days between the two treatment groups. So they had quite a low incidence of diarrhea versus the control group, which had significantly more diarrhea days. So there was no statistical difference between the two treatment groups. There was a difference, however, in weight gain. And you can see here across all nine uh, farms that the animals that had received diclasural had a higher average daily gain compared to those that received toltasural. Sorry, toltra is that? Baycox. <laughs> sorry, I'm getting tongue tied here. <laughs> Um, in terms of the weight gain, then just to sort of amalgamate all of the five or the nine uh, sites together, um, you can see here across the study that the metaphylactic treatment uh, with both diclasural and tultrasural reduces the impact of coccidiosis. But those calves that received diclasural had a higher average daily gain of 57 grams per kilo per day. In terms then of the study conclusion, so why were there better um, results seen then from those calves that received vococcin? I suppose the differences are as a result of the pharmacokinetic properties between diclasural and tultrasural. And really the difference is in the dose rate. So you have a difference of one milligram per kg and the half-life for vococcin is 30 hours versus tultrasural, which has a concentration treatment dosage rate of 15 milligrams per kilo and a half-life of two and a half days and subsequent periods of activity. So a key finding in this study was that the Baycox bovis treated calves were more susceptible to infection from 30 days post-treatment compared to the those calves that received vacoxin. And the authors believe that the duration of action of the diclasural treated calves appeared to allow a better degree of exposure to the Ameria species to allow those animals to develop species specific protective immunity. The second study then, this is quite a similar study um, in that the authors again compared the efficacy of diclasural and tultrasural in the prevention of bovine coccidiosis. There were 86 calves in this uh, study. Again, they were between five and six weeks old. And quite similarly, the calves were monitored for the same length of time, so 78 days following treatment. And again, they were observed for clinical observation, body weight and faecal oocyst excretion. Study results for this study showed that actually there was no significant difference between the two treatment groups in terms of body weight. However, there was a difference in the number of diarrhea days. So there was no difference in the diarrhea days between all three groups between days one to day 41. However, from day 42, the vacoxin treated group showed only one diarrhea day compared to nine and 18 days for the control and toltrasural treated groups respectively. Just in terms of the actual results here, you can see on the graph on your right hand side, the untreated group um, showed that basically there was continuous exposure throughout the challenge. So um, in the control group, you can see that there was continuous oocysts picked up in the faeces. In the diclasural treated group, the faecal oocyst count declined post to low levels following treatment. However, there was um, a few days between day 27 and 42 where there was a oocyst count occasionally greater than 500 oocysts per gram, but they remained low thereafter. 
the group that received Taltrazerol showed quite low fecal oocyst counts up until day 40, but then showed several peaks thereafter. And these actually coincided with actual clinical signs. So I suppose, again, this brings us back to um, the low fecal oocyst uh, output following the Taltrazerol really probably did impact on the development of immunity, which led then those animals to be susceptible then to reinfection later on. A final comment then for the coxin and additional benefits. So I suppose after use of taltrazerol, um, the metabolite of taltrazerol that's passed out in feces is taltrazerol sulfone, which is panazerol as it can sometimes be called. And unfortunately, it has been shown to be very persistent um, in soil, so can survive for about around a year and become be quite mobile. And unfortunately, it is also toxic to plants. Um, and there is a requirement for treated animals um, for their manure to be diluted um, with the manure of untreated or mature animals. Um, the good news is that Vococcin contains diclazerol and it does not ca carry this environmental warning. So in summary then, why use Vococcin? So Vococcin is a flexible product. It can be used in both lambs and calves and there's no restriction in terms of the weight or the age range that it can be used. It can be used in both dairy replacement heifer calves, dairy bull calves. It can be used in sucklers of all weights and ages and as well as that in lambs, as well as those that are intensively reared. As we've seen from the studies, it allows both natural immunity to develop, and we've seen higher daily live weight gain following the use of diclazerol. And the final point then, it, it is environmentally friendly, and we don't need to be concerned of any, about any metabolites that could affect potentially soil or plant or wildlife. Mm -hmm.